Hello ladies and gentlemen of YouTube, this is Robert Star Phoenix coming at you with my first uh, voiceover video. Uh, welcome to my channel. Uh, my video here today is going to be about uh, Destiny of an Emperor. As you've watched my channel, you've probably seen me do a few different playthroughs of this. And the reason why is because I just happen to be a huge fan of this game. I love it. I love the story behind it. I like the other games that go with it, the Romance of the Three Kingdoms, which I recommend playing at least once in your life. Um, today I'm going to discuss the generals, the characters that are used in the game, um, some thoughts I have on them, why I use them, or why I wish I could use them through the whole game when I can't. Um, so I'm going to try not to make this too horribly long, but you know, you'll forgive me if I go on for a little while, try not to ramble too much. I do want to preface this before I start saying talking about the characters, is that I've tried my best to learn how to pronounce their names. I do not speak Chinese. All the games, uh, all the names, sorry, the names are in Chinese or one of the, um, you know, the Asian, you know, the dialects in China. So if I mispronounce something, don't hold it against me. I've done the very best I could. So anyway, let's start off with the characters and that you start with at the beginning of the game. At the beginning of the game, you notice right away when you hit start, you create your save file, that you get three characters. <coughs> the first one of note is Liu Bei. <coughs> Excuse me. Liu Bei is the leader of the uh, volunteer army that's supposed to be fighting off um, a band of um, bad guys called the Yellow Scars. I forget exactly what they call them. In the uh, Japanese version, they call them the uh, Yellow Turbans. Anyway, as you can see by his stats, he's got some pretty good stats. He has a reasonable amount of strength. He's got good intelligence. If I were able to keep him to the end of the game, he would probably be one of the characters I would keep all the way through the game just because he's that awesome. Uh, the one hang-up I have about him is he's a little slow, but... Anyway, when you start out in the game, he's your meat shield, he's your tank, he's the one that's going to protect you. He's also really good using the tactics, which uh, tactics are pretty much the magic of this game. So, I mean, he's good fighting, he's good using those. He could be your tactician, that is the character that gives you the ability to use the magic or the tactics. Uh, the problem is that he would either be pulled out of the battle or be placed on the bottom of the fighting order, which would be a bad thing because you need him at the top of the fighting order to protect everybody else until you gain a couple levels. So, but yeah, he's definitely one of those characters I wish I had at the end of the game. There are characters statistically superior to him that, are, that come at the end of the game that don't make me miss him too much, but yeah, he would definitely be one of the ones I would keep. Enjoy using him while you can, because you do lose him very fairly quickly. The uh, first part of the game barely takes about 15 minutes or half an hour to do, depending on how you play it. The next character that you get is Zhang Fei. Um, he's considered the king of attack power, just because his strength is 250. Now, mind you, the uh, stats on this game go up to 255 maximum. So you can tell he's pretty darn strong. Any weapon you give him, he does a phenomenal amount of damage. And he starts out with almost no soldiers, so he's a little difficult to keep alive at start. His intelligence is well, his intelligence is what it is. He gets hit by every tactic that gets thrown at him, pretty much. But his main thing is that he is a warrior, and believe me, I love him. I wish I had him at the end of the game. The only problem would be at the end of the game, his intelligence would be a handicap to you. So in a way, I'm kind of glad that he isn't. Uh, he also comes with the ability to level his soldiers. The soldiers are kind of like getting hit points in this game. As he levels, he gets more than any of the other ones that can level their soldiers up. So he's really useful. He becomes the ultimate meat shield. If you're able to keep him up to level 51, he gets something on the order like uh, 44,000 or something like that, which uh, pretty makes him makes him bigger than the final boss in the game. Um, the third character is Guan Yu. Now Guan Yu is a lot of people consider him to be the best character out of the three because of his combination of strength and intelligence. He hits hard, he can use his, the tactics very well, and overall he's a really really good character. He, I, I, I personally think he's the best one out of the three. A lot of people like using him as the main tactics user. I don't because I'd rather have him as a hitter but he can switch. You know, he's one of the few characters you can actually switch, and you'll get good results either way. So, as I said, those are your three starting characters. Excellent characters to have. Don't get me wrong. Uh, you do get better toward the end of the game. 
But like you said, these guys serve you very, very well, especially Zhang Fei and Guan Yu, especially because you hold on to them for a long time, and you'll be glad that you have them around. So, in the village, um, you run into the Song brothers. I call them brothers because I don't know if they are or not. Uh, Song Ren and Song Yong. Now, Song Ren, he's got decent strength. Now, his soldier counts a little weak, and his intelligence is nothing to you know be happy about. Uh, Unfortunately, he's not a very good character, but the fact that he has just enough soldiers so he can take a hit means that he doesn't lose his attack power right away. And because he has an 80 strength, he's pretty much equal to everybody else you're going to pick up at the early part of the game, so I like to keep him around for one major battle. And I, I refer to the major battle as any boss battle or any um, scripted battle in the game. So he's good for up to that point after which you get rid of him. Which brings me up to the next guy, Song Yong. I don't know what Capcom was thinking making this character. According to um, resources online, these two guys are fictional. Uh, they're, the game is based on historical storybooks and you know text and things like that. But anyway, Song Yong, most horrible character in the game, has a low soldier count, no strength, no intelligence. The guy can't even take a hit. He spends most of the time doing exactly one damage to anything you fight. Um, his sole purpose is to be the number one person in your party for the brief walk between Luseng Village and Zhuzhao Castle, after which point you will dump him forever and never look at him again. Sorry, but this guy sucks. If you want to keep using him, he provides you a good challenge because you know you have to run around with somebody who basically can't hit anything. Now, bear in mind, these guys are free characters. Um, your next freebie is Mize. Uh, and his strength and intelligence and his agility, which agility is not shown on these stat screens, are phenomenal for this area of the game. He is, in fact, the best character you can recruit outside of the three you start with. Uh, he basically becomes the second person in your party um, in the battle order right underneath Liu Bei. He's got enough soldiers to take a hit. He can hit hard enough with his strength, and he can use tactics reasonably well. Uh, depending on how you play, he may or may not be your tactician. I usually don't use him in that capacity because the next guy you pick up has the exact same intelligence, and his name is Chen Deng. Uh, Chen Deng is slightly higher strength, a little bit lower soldiers, and it's a little bit less agility. They're pretty much interchangeable otherwise. I use him for the tactician. And uh, he stays at the bottom of the fighting order, so my five characters at the start of the game are, are Liu Bei, you know, Zhang Fei, Guan Yu, and then Mize, and Chen Ding. Not necessarily in that order, of course, but those are the five that I use for a little while. The only other character at the start of the game that you really need to pick up is uh, Han Zong. Uh, Han Zong, he's got the average strength. Uh, his intelligence is pretty much bottomed out. Uh, but he's got a lot of soldiers, which makes him good to take hits. Uh, you will use him a little bit. I tend to use him a little bit and put Chen Ding out of the battle order when I get him, just to have the meat shield. And that's all he really is, is a meat shield. Um, you use him for a little while, and you'll get rid of him. You hire him so that way you can make the last battle in the first part of the game a little bit easier. Because there are two ways to do it. You can attack the castle from the front, or you can go around the back. Now, the good thing about using him and going around the back is you get to pick up another weapon, which is normally not available in the game. So, there's benefits to using him. Okay, after you clear out the first section of the game, uh, you go into a section of the game where you actually have to start recruiting characters uh, for money. Now, bear in mind, Henzong, um, you do have to recruit him for money if you're unfortunate enough that he asks for it. It's not bad, but for the rest of the game, uh, the free characters are fewer and fewer. So enjoy having the free characters while you can. So after you beat the first section of the game, you go on to the next section of the game. You lose uh, Liu Bei, uh, sad face. Uh, but you pick up his son, his son Liu Feng. Um, almost the exact same strength. He's probably a little bit higher. He's got a lot more agility. His intelligence is you know, significantly less, but he's got more soldiers. Basically, he's going to... You know, he's going to be one of your best to use for a long time. I actually prefer to use him as my uh, tactics user. There's a difference between a tactician and a tactics user. A tactician is the guy who actually lets you 
have the ability to use these tactics, and the tactics user is the main person you use in battle. I like to use him as the tactics user because his intelligence is high enough to make some impact, and he's got the agility uh, to usually move first or close to first in the battle so it'll help especially when you have to use one of the protective ones or if you have to do an emergency heal with them but like I say he's all around good hitter too and you'll enjoy him for using him for quite a while um, the first uh, fortress that you run into in the second section of the game you run into this guy called Hua Zion. now he's got a very high strength he's got a lot of soldiers the game likes to do this to you a lot. It gives you, very early on, a character with a decent amount of strength, high soldiers. It's pretty much to um, tell you, if you have, if you don't want to get beat up too badly, you can hire this guy. He'll help you for a little while. Now, the problem is, Hua Ziyang is kind of expensive. <laughs> and, um, he can cost you several hundred gold, and he's pretty hard to get a hold of sometimes. Um, there's a cave nearby that you can usually get lucky and get a hold of him. If you manage to get him early enough, um, definitely put him into the battle party, and you'll be using him for a long time. His soldier count matches the highest soldier count that all of the enemies in the in this area of the game has, which is um, which, which a lot of people refer to as the Dongzuo area. So yeah, if you can pick him up, definitely go for it. Um, I usually don't because... The, that part of the game is pretty quick, and this guy, Yang Jin, you pick him up for free. Granted, he doesn't have nearly as much strength, he's not as fast, and he doesn't have as much soldiers, but he's a freebie. To me, he's pretty much a hands-on replacement. And you use him for a little while. Um, now, he's got a... There's an interesting thing about him. A lot of people think there's a bug in the game. There's two other characters in the game. Their names are uh, Wang Gui and... Uh, uh, Zhu, Zhao, uh, Zhao Chao, I said forgive me on that, uh, they are all linked. If you never recruit Yang Jin, you'll never see uh, Wang Gui in the later castle in the game. And if you don't get Wang Gui, you cannot get Zhao Chao in a castle after that. So these three guys are connected. It is not a bug in the game, it's actually a trigger. And some people call it a bug, but I, after playing the game as much as I have, I figured that part out. So, like I say, he's a freebie. If you want to take him, go for it. Now, the cave I was talking about near the uh, the first fortress where you can uh, run into Hua Ziyang, you can pick up Yang Jin, there's this guy here, Guan Ping. Uh, Guan Ping is, I think, like an adopted son to Guan Yu or something like that. I'm not entirely sure. But he is the most missable character in this game. The reason why is that there's an event trigger that you have to perform for him to appear. And that is, you have to go into this cave and you have to get the gold key. If you miss the gold key, he will never appear. Now, as you can see, he is a very strong character. He's got a decent amount of intelligence and he's got a lot of soldiers. And plus, he's fast. He's actually faster than Lu Feng. And if you get him, you will be using him for a good long while. In fact, you'll be using him longer than uh, you'll be using Lu Feng. I highly recommend getting a hold of him uh, because with the gold key, you get to pick up somebody else later if you choose. The next fortress, uh, you run into this guy, Lu Bu. Now, if Zhang Fei is considered the god of attack power, Lu Bu's five points strength higher, and for some darn reason, that means he hits significantly harder than Zhang Fei does. He can do upwards of ten points of damage more with the exact same weapon. Um, must be like random number generator or something, but like I said, if Zhang Fei is the king, this guy is the freaking emperor or demigod, whatever you want to call him. His soldier count is really good. He has an insane amount of uh, agility, and you'll hate fighting him. Um, that gold key that you picked up will eventually lead to another item, which you will then use in battle to try to recruit Lubu. And you'll have Lubu for a good little while, so enjoy him while you have him. Him and Zhang Fei put together, pretty much you can crush anything <laughs> with uh, physical attacks, believe me. It's fun using them. Also in the battle with Lubu, you run into this guy, Li Ru. Now, you'll notice his strength is completely decimated. I'm thinking it's because he's an old man or something, or I don't know. Anyway, but his intelligence level makes him an interesting prospect. He's kind of hard to run into, but if you can get a hold of him, he is your best tactician to have. That 200 intelligence means he gets the most points, he'll learn everything, and you'll completely enjoy using him. 
if you don't pick him up, it's not the end of the world because you will pick up somebody else that's almost as good as him intelligence-wise and has better strength. But Leroy is pretty good. Using him in battle stinks because any weapon you give him, he does like one to two points of damage no matter what. Uh, <laughs> if he had Song Yong's strength, he would actually be a lot better. But that's, you know, that's a whole other story. But uh, yeah, because he can be kind of difficult. He's uh, expensive to hire uh, if, you, if he only asks for gold. Um, but yeah, if you can get a hold of him, he's the absolute best tactician you can get. Oh, sorry about that. Um, your next character, you can pick this guy up for free after you beat Lubu and Liru, is Ho Hu. Ho Hu loves powder. That's exactly what he says in the game. Um, 175 intelligence. He's a good tactician. His strength is 80. That makes him average. And he's got decent soldiers. The only major problem I have with him, he is slow as molasses. In fact, the rebel forces will sometimes get a turn before him. Even with the special item Chitu Ma that you can pick up a little bit back, he's still not very fast. But he's good to use in battle if you can deal with the speed. A lot of times I don't. I just make him the tactician and let him sit out of battle because it's just painful. Uh, your next um, area that you can pick up somebody, you'll fight... Uh, a couple of different castles, and you come to another one where you have the opportunity to recruit Lubu. Now, this guy here, Kai Young, is with him. You'll notice something about this guy. He's got better intelligence and better strength than uh, Huo Hu. Plus, he's pretty quick, and he's got a lot of soldiers. Um, out of the three tacticians in the Dong Zuo area of the game, I consider him to be the best one to recruit if you can get a hold of him, because he can replace... Uh, Lu Feng and Hua Ziyong or whoever you happen to have on your fifth um, slot. He can stay in battle, fights pretty hard, uses the tactics really well, and you'll be using him for a good long while. They say, but any one of the three will definitely help you. Like I said, I consider him the best of the three. Um, after you defeat Dong Zuo for the last time, you'll be in the third area of the game, which is Nan Yang or Nan Ying. I can I can never remember how to pronounce that one. And again, you'll run into a castle, and the first castle, you run into a guy with a lot of soldiers. Uh, mediocre strength, uh, Lei Bo. He's one of those, if you really had trouble with the fight with him, where you were getting hit hard, you may want to pick him up just for the meat shieldiness. He's not a great character, strength-wise. But, like I said, if you're having trouble, pick him up. You can use him for a while. He'll serve you for a couple of castles, and then you'll pick up uh, this guy. <laughs> Ji Ling. Ji Ling is the monster of the area. 192 strength. He's got pre he's pretty quick and he's got a lot of soldiers. I definitely recommend him. He will replace somebody for sure. Uh, there's also his partner, which is uh, Zhang Jun. A uh, little bit lower in strength, a little bit lower in intelligence, a little bit slower in speed. I would take this guy only if you can't get a hold of Ji Ling. If you happen to run into him first, take him just so you have that meat shield, strong hitter type. But yeah, Jiling's definitely the one that you'd prefer. Uh, sometimes when I'm feeling goofy, I'll get both of them just just to say that I've got both of them. It makes uh, the last couple of battles in the game entirely too easy with both of them because they can take so many hits. Um, after you def after you clear out Nanyang, uh, you'll lose uh, Lubu, unfortunately. Spoiler alert! But I'm not worried about giving out spoilers because this game's old enough and. Anybody watching this should probably at least play this game once, or if you haven't, well, I apologize for spoilers, but I'm not going to contain them. Uh, yeah, you'll lose Lubu, you'll get into a couple of fights, and then you'll you'll have a choice. Um, the game sort of splits in the Jingzhou, uh, Wan Shao area, Yuan Shao area, where you can kind of choose your own path a little bit. It's not as linear as the first couple of areas was. Um, there's a cave, there's a castle, and then there's Jingzhou. Um, most people end up going to the castle first, is Bohai Castle, uh, or to the cave. If you go to Bohai Castle first, you'll run into uh, the next guy, which happens to be Lu Guang. Uh, again, he's mediocre strength, but he's got over a thousand soldiers. And now this is important. This is the stage of the game where you actually learn that the soldier count matters. He's just over a thousand soldiers, but while he has that, he hits twice, almost twice as hard as he does when he's under a thousand. And still, with the strength, there's nothing to sneeze at. He's got a decent amount of agility. And, like I said, he's going to be a meat shield if you really, really need it. 
pick them up after you beat them at Bohai. Uh, if not, there's a cave just to the west of that where you can pick up this guy for absolutely free, Zhao, uh, Zhao King. Uh, he's basically a Lubu replacement. He's got more soldiers, he's not nearly as strong, he's got more intelligence, and he's a little bit slower. But if you can't get a hold of Lu Guang or he had trouble with that battle, you can go pick him up first. I usually go to the cave and pick him up first just because it makes this part of the game a little bit easier. And now beyond this, you can kind of run around back and forth and pick up different characters. Usually the next stop is going to be this little prison just to the east of Bohai. And you'll run into, uh, you saw this guy before, at the bridge when uh, Yuan Sha decided to give you a spanking. One Hun, this 190 strength, good agility, amazing amount of soldiers. If you get a hold of him, you've pretty much got half of this next section of the game in your, in your back pocket. He will serve you very, very well, and he's, there's there's nothing really bad I have to say about him, in fact his intelligence is just horrible. There's also this other guy here, uh, Yan Liang, um, a little bit lower in strength, a little bit lower in soldiers. If you pick up both of them, hey, great, you've got two of the best meat shields in the game that can actually hit pretty hard. You give them, your, you know, you give them a couple of spears or whatever else you happen to find, and they're going to do a reasonable amount of damage, you know, excess of 100 damage a hit. Um, that's not saying that you should give them the trident, unless you really want to. Zhang Fei with the trident that you pick up in Nanyang Castle is amazing. He does like three to 400 with it. And he's only got like about 400 to 500 soldiers at this point in the game. So, um, after that, you run into uh, Zhao Yun. <laughs> what happens if you wanted the tigers? Um, if I get the soldier count here, I took the screenshot from the later part of the game. But you'll notice his stats. Phenomenal. He ends up being the best character in the game. At the end of the game, he is the best. Uh, his only problem is his agility is horrible. And at the start of the game, he has next to no soldiers. But he ends up being your primary tactics user if you want him. He can hit hard. Um, yeah, I got nothing bad to say about him, really, except for, you know, his agility just kind of, like, irks me sometimes, but at the end of the game, he actually gets more soldiers than the final boss in the game, which is astounding. Um, now, th these are all part of the Yuan Shao area. If you decide to go down to Jingzhou, uh, you'll fight a really, really hard battle at Changsha Castle, but you'll um, be able to pick up uh, crap. Uh, I skipped over one. <laughs> Okay, uh, one other guy of note in the uh, Yuan Shao section of the game I want to talk about is a uh, uh, Go To here. He's like really late in the area. He's got lower soldiers than one Hunter Yan Liang, but his strength and his intelligence his strength is equal and his intelligence is better. If you if you really need him, pick him up. If not, you, know, you can kind of probably just forget about it. But yeah, he basically serves as the last meat shield in the game in that portion of the game. Now, yeah, now onward to Chengsha Castle. You run in this guy, Wei Yan. He's a freaking beast. His strength, is, his agility, and his soldier count are just amazing. You pick a hold of him, and you slap him with one of the swords you find, and you cruise through this section of the game, Jing Zhao, and um, Yuan Shao's area, they're, they're cake after you pick a hold of him. And on top of it, when you win that fight, you also get a hold of uh, Huang Zhang, who happens to be another one of the tigers. And as you see, his strength is phenomenal. For our old guy, he's phenomenal. His intelligence is a little on the mediocre side, and, and for a long time, his soldier count matches Guan Yu, and eventually he gets the fewest soldiers out of the tigers. The old guy has to have a limitation. He just can't command as many people. But if you want to use him, hey, <laughs> you'll enjoy it. Um, unfortunately for me, I tend to put him away because i rather use some of the other characters that have more soldiers. And, you know, like Wei Yan and Wen Hun. Um, after you defeat Jing, Jing Zhao, you have the option of picking up one very special character who uh, can be incredibly difficult if you're not careful. Uh, Mr. Peng Tong. <laughs> uh, as you can see, his intelligence is extremely high, uh, and his soldier count is amazing. His soldier count is so high, in fact, that the section of the game after this, which is in Shu, he has more soldiers than everybody there. Um, he he can be a tactician, however, he is your party leader. He will absorb all the damage he takes. Uh, most of the other tactics users cannot hit him, and any tactics he uses will just decimate everything. 
especially if he has Chitu Ma, he will go first almost every time. And well, basically, you'll just enjoy the heck out of the game. He makes it probably makes it a little bit too easy, <laughs> but uh, he's definitely worth picking up. Oh, and by the way, do not fight him by the water when he attacks you; otherwise, he will crush you. That uh, Hung Shui attack is no joke. For the weakness that you have, um, there's not too many people that can survive it. Now, if you're having trouble picking him up after you beat Jing Zhao, um, use a bunch of smoke pots, go back and find uh, these next two guys. Masu, he's a little bit underrated in my opinion. Yeah, his strength is kind of low and his intelligence is fairly high. He's 195 and that's nothing to sneeze at. But his soldier count is the thing that I like the most because he's got a lot of soldiers. And the fact that his intelligence is kind of high means in the battle with Peng Tong, Peng Tong may not necessarily hit him every single time, and that's important, especially if you happen to fight him when he's able to use Hong Shui. If he happens to not be able to use it, he can only use Darei and the other stuff, he, a lot of them will bounce off him because he's actually got some strength, he can hit. Uh, pick him up if you need the extra meat shieldiness to Shu, because Shu can be a pain in the butt. And his brother, Ma Liang, this guy you want to keep in your party until you learn you see that tactic on the buff says Anne Shaw? You want to keep him until you learn that. The reason why is that he is the only character that you pick up um, that will learn it for a very, very long time. And both of them are free, by the way, so that's another reason why I say go ahead and get them. Uh, he's got good soldiers. If you wanted to use them in battle, you could probably do it, but his strength is really low, and I prefer to have hitters, and we've already got plenty of tactics users, and I really don't need him. Now, the important thing to read, another reason why Molly Young is good is that the likes of Peng Tong and the next guy I'm about to show you learn a technique called Wan Fu, uh, which heals all the soldiers of one particular person. He keeps Yin Zian, which heals roughly about 800 to 1,000 at a time to everybody. So it's important to keep him and switch him and uh, the next guy I'm going to show you, who happens to be uh, Zuge Liang. This guy, he's Decent strength, you know, he's mediocre. But the part, look at this, his intelligence, 255. This means that he is phenomenal in battle or out of battle. If you use him solely as your tactician, you will have the most tactics points that the game will possibly allow you to have. Now, under normal playthroughs, that means 154, like you see here. There is a way to get 159, but that requires a lot of grinding for the Fu Bing strategy, which is extremely difficult to do for some people, and it's not really worth it. But if you're a completionist, you do that, You'll have 159 of 160 possible tactic points. Which, like I said, and he gets soldiers on top of it. I consider him one of the tigers, even though he's technically not called a tiger in the game. But yeah, you get him, and that's it. He stays in your party. He learns all the best tactics. That Jin Zian that you see on the screen there, it's basically like using an Elixir D later in the game on everybody at one time. And it uses a very low amount of tactic points. It uses like four which is very, very good at the end of the game because uh, the other uh, tactic right underneath this is Simeon. Uh, that uses like 17. <laughs> so, yeah, you'll understand that if you watched my playthrough, um, especially towards the end of the game, where those tactic points make a difference. You don't have a whole lot to juggle. Um, so you pick up all these characters, and then you go to Shu. And, haha, how do, how do you like this? The game, first battle in the next area, uh, you run into Zong... Uh, Zhang Ren. He's pretty much a behemoth. He's got very good strength, he's got very good intelligence, and he's got a lot of soldiers. Pick him up. Pick him up. And that way there you'll use him well into the, after, well through Shu and into Wu, which is the area after that. And you'll be using him for a good long time. Now further on into the game, uh, into Shu, you will run into Yan Yan. Not quite as intelligent. I think agility-wise they're both about the same, but strength-wise they're both about the same, and soldier-wise they're the same. Picking up both of them is highly recommended. This is one of the few times I'll actually say you're going to be replacing most of the Tiger Generals with um, recruited Generals just because you're going to want the meat shieldiness. Because your Tiger Generals barely have a thousand soldiers to their names. And believe me, it makes it a whole lot easier if you have the meat shieldiness. And plus these guys, like I said, they'll serve you well into Wu when you're un by that point you'll be replacing them anyway. But the uh, Yan Yan, and then you go up to the next castle, and then you run into <laughs> Madai. Madai is the penultimate um, non-tiger that you're going to pick up. And shoot. 
strength is very high, intelligence is very high, he's got a wicked amount of soldiers and um, agility. I like using him. He actually lasts longer than Zhang Ren and Yan Yan because his intelligence is a little bit higher and his strength is a little bit higher, even though he's got like a hundred and some less soldiers. He'll actually be in Wu with me for a while. And the nice thing about him is you get to pick up, I guess, his brother or his cousin, however you want to do it, Machao, the last the, the last of the official tigers. And I say official tigers because there is one other general, I call it tiger. But as you can see, his strength is 245, which means he matches Zhao Yun, he matches Guan Yu. His intelligence is 162, is reasonable. He's uh, He doesn't get a whole lot of soldiers in the game, which kind of bothers me sometimes. And oddly enough, Machao is eclipsed by a non-Tiger General at the end of the game, which I will show you at the end of this uh, video. Um, but sometimes I just end up not using him just because his soldiers don't grow fast enough for me, which really, really bothers me. Uh, but he, he is a Tiger, he's very, very strong, and if you strap you know, a good weapon on him, you will enjoy using him immensely, so it's entirely up to you. So I, I kind of switch him in and out as I need him, personally. Um, after this particular section of the game is done, you run into an interlude where you lose Zhang Fei and Guan Yu. Yes, you lose them. And you have the options of recruiting their sons. Now, their sons... Uh, sometimes I like using them, sometimes I don't. Uh, Guan Yu's son is uh, Guan Jing, and You'll notice his stats are both a little bit lower than Guan Yu, but I only say a very little. They're pretty much equal in every respect, and Guan Xing is a little bit faster. Um, out of the two uh, Tiger you know, out, of, out of the two, he's probably the one that you want to keep. Uh, he still gets soldiers the same as Guan Yu would, so he gets a remarkable amount of them. And pretty much, it's like using his father. And so you get him, you won't have a problem. Like I say, you'll enjoy using him. The next one uh, is Zhang Fei's son, uh, Zhang Bao. 240 strength, okay, so he's a little bit weaker than the other tigers. He does get more intelligence, and he does get Zhang Fei's uh, soldier count, which means he will balloon up to that 40 plus thousand in, by the end of the game. The, the problem I have with him is that intelligence, because he has the lowest intelligence next to Huang Zhang, that makes him pretty much vulnerable to all the tactics users in the game. And, um, yeah, I tend not to use him unless I'm doing an all tigers playthrough like the one that I showed you all on my channel earlier. So yeah, it's entirely up to you. If you recruit both of them, believe me, you'll enjoy it. And Zhang Bao is a good character, and don't get me wrong, I completely agree that he's a good character. But he's just not a preference for me. He he is one of those uh, polarizing characters. There are people that love using him, and there are people that can't stand using him. So, uh... I lean towards the ones that don't use him. So, um, once you get decide which one of the sons you do want to have, you go into the Wu section, and guess what? First castle, what do you run into? The uh, <laughs> the meat shield tank monster that you probably want to recruit. Gan Ning, um, good strength, good intelligence. Get him, believe me, you'll need him. That 6,000 soldiers is no joke. That's actually pretty low for this area of the game, but you will use him for a good long while. Um, along with him is uh, Lusu. Lusu is stronger and smarter and has more soldiers than Maliang. At the section of the game, the, he serves one special purpose, which is why I recruit him. He makes the next battle that you have to fight a lot easier because of his intelligence. And the fact that he has enough soldiers to survive it if he gets hit with something. Um, the next battle of the game features three tacticians, and you get introduced to the An Shaw tactic for the first time because you're fighting this freaking beast, Zhao Yu. Okay, his strength and his intelligence are freaking phenomenal. He's fast, he's got a lot of soldiers, and he. He has An Shaw, which means he can pretty much decapitate any of your generals, with the exception of guys like Peng Tong and Lu Su. Uh, if you are using Ma Su, uh, he's probably the only other one that will survive it. Now, he also has Hong Shui. Um, these tactics you're seeing here are the ones he has because I recruit him. But he has, also has Hong Shui, and so does one other guy, and then another guy has Shui Lei, which means you're fighting by the water and you're getting pounded by these guys. 
So it's very useful to have Lu Su, Peng Tong, and all the intelligent guys. And like I said, mo most of the other guys are reasonable hitters, which helps too. So, But yeah, you recruit him, you use him in battle. Um, you can use him to replace Peng Tong at that point. And obviously he's a lot stronger than Peng Tong, so he'll be a phenomenal hitter. You're only losing 10 points of intelligence, which doesn't really matter in battle, but you're beginning almost double the soldiers, which is very, very useful. And I use him sometimes into Wade, which is the, you know, next to, which is the final area of the game. Um, an interesting recruit choice is Zhang Zhao. You run into him kind of late. Um, his strength is mediocre, but he's got that Peng Tong intelligence, 240, and plus he's got a lot of soldiers. The one reason you might want to recruit him is to have um, somebody who can use Anshan battle if you want to use Zhao Yu to be the person who's going to give you the Anshan tactic. Or if you just want another tactician to throw uh, whatever. He does have a lot of soldiers. He does hit reasonably hard, so you know you can use him to replace a guy like Lu Su or, or just like replace somebody else who happens to have low soldiers and you want protection against those... Um, crazy Hong Shui users, that, or if you want to just have protection at the end of the game when you're fighting, um, and the end of the area, I mean, not the end of the game, end of the area when you're fighting uh, Sun Quan and his guys. You know, this, this is up to you. I, I pick him for those limited purposes, but for those limited purposes, he's very, very good. This leads me to the next interesting quandary. Right before you get to the battle with uh, Sun Quan, you have the option for the first time ever to get a 10,000 soldier character. You have two options, uh, Zuzi being the first. Um, he's got a very high amount of strength, his intelligence is okay, his agility is mediocre. The problem I have with him is that, look at that, he's barely got 10,000 soldiers, so usually after the first or second hit, you know, he loses his attack power advantage. He's kind of like the Lu Guang of Wu. You know, I remember Lu Guang was in uh, the Yuan Shao area and he barely had 1,000 soldiers, so... Um, but yeah, if you really want the 10,000 soldier person, he's probably your best choice. The second choice, which I used in my No Tigers uh, walkthrough, was Zhu Xing. Zhu Xing is a step down. He's got a, bit, a lot more soldiers, though, and he's a little bit faster. But he's a step down in the strength department. Either way, pick up one of them if you want to have a 10,000 soldier person. You want to have the advantage of getting that, uh, that final attack modifier. Either one of them are going to work for you. Uh, when you get into the fight with Sun Quan, you're going to fight his henchmen first. And he's got two very, very powerful henchmen. Uh, first one being Lu Sun here. Lu Sun, it, I don't know what they were thinking when they made this guy. But they made him so impossibly strong in both areas, strength and intelligence, that you want to use him. <laughs> in fact, if you saw my No Tigers playthrough, he is in the last battle with me fighting you know, fighting the final boss. His soldier counts mediocre. You know what? You're not going to be using him to attack so much as you're going to be using him to fling tactics around. And with uh, Chi Tumon, he's actually pretty quick. Uh, he's, like I say, he's, he's just phenomenal. He's only one of three characters in the game that has a 240 intelligence. So he's definitely the best one out of the three by a long shot. Uh, the other guy that you get uh, is Tai Chi Chi. Um, He's got almost the same strength as the Tiger, so his intelligence is you know, kind of low, but his soldier count his soldier count is so high that he has more soldiers than some of the characters weigh. Um, again, he is a very, very good choice uh, for the, um, the 10,000 soldier bonus. He will replace Zhu Zi or, or Zhu, Sh or Zhu Xing uh, in a normal playthrough. Or if you just want to use him just because you don't want to use Machao or somebody like that who has ridiculously low soldiers, you throw him in there, strap him with one of the... Uh, to 240 swords or the 190 swords and just run with it. <laughs> run with it. He'll be you'll be he'll be in your party for a good long while. Um, so that pretty much completes Wu. Now your next uh, and final area is Wei. And Wei is divided up in two sections. Divided into before the death of Cao Pai and after the death of him. And the very first character you get is who I consider the final uh, tiger, Zhang Wei. Zhang Wei is a little overpowered. Now you might be thinking, well, his strength and intelligence doesn't mean overpowered. The thing that I call why I call him overpowered is that his agility combined with Chi Tu Ma means he goes first every time, except for maybe once out of every 50 battles. Um, he just 
he's just awesome. I mean, you, he's got Zhao Yun's soldier count, which means he gets, at the end of the game, he'll have over 40,000. And all around, he's just amazing. This is why a lot of people do not like to get Zhang Bao, because they want to keep room in their fighting party for him. And you can uh, toggle him and uh, Zuge Lang, depending on if you want to end shot tactician or not, or if you happen to have uh, Zhao Yu in tow, who Zhao Yu's actually got slightly more intelligence and is better to be using as an outer battle tactician. You can use both him and Zuge Lang just to start decapitating everything, and they will do it with a resounding amount of success. Like I said, the fact that he's got very good strength means he hits pretty hard. Uh, he's definitely a good choice for one of the 190 swords. I wouldn't give him a 241 just because it's you're not going to be using him in battle that much. Hell, you can even strap a lance to him and he wouldn't notice it. So, But as far as the free characters go, he's the very last free character you get. He couldn't come at a better time because you really need someone with some degree of intelligence. Now, before you get to Zhang Wei, though, you have to fight... Uh, Zheng Lao. Zheng Lao uh, has tactics when you fight him. He's got Ant Shaw, and he is a mean bastard to fight. Um, you won't get a chance to recruit him until after Cal, Cal P's died, dead. But if you look at his uh, statistics, do you notice something? Yeah. He's a lot like Zhao Yun. In fact, he's like 12 points weaker, 13 points weaker in strength than Zhao Yun, but he's got the exact same intelligence, and he's faster. This is why he made my party in the No Tigers version, because he's a beast. And he is one of the few that will get the maximum bonus off of the Halberd, if you're able to find the Halberd without the glitch going off. But yeah, he's definitely somebody, if you need somebody who's got a lot of intelligence, and you're having trouble with those tactics hitting you, find him, grab him, put him in your party, and enjoy it. Now you said, those that 13,000 soldiers, that might not seem like much, but since the tactics usually don't hit him, that's a lot of soldiers, because he'll have a lot of defense, and he'll hit pretty hard. So I said, that 232 strength is nothing to sneeze at. Um, as an option, you also get, um, after you fight, um, I think you get Zia, you see Zia how done during the battle with Cal P, uh, either in Runan or the fortress before it, I can't remember. Now, he made my No Tigers party for a very important reason, and that is because of his intelligence level. 192. That's pretty solid. The 204 strength means he's got the exact same strength as um, Zhang Wei. His soldiers are pretty good. He's, a, he's one of those situational characters. You know, if you need somebody who's got a little bit more intelligence, you don't mind the strength hit, take him. Like I say, you can see here I've got him equipped with one of the 190 swords because... Well, the game glitched out on me anyway. I lost so many other weapons. But but yeah, he's definitely a good choice if you're having problems and you can get a hold of him easy. I probably wouldn't go out of my way to get him unless you're playing the No Tigers. But I mean, he's definitely one of those interesting choices. Um, the uh, <laughs> Here we go. Uh, cows... Oh boy, what the heck happened here? Okay. And the, uh, I think the, sorry about that little glitch there. Uh, and the final character that you probably will want to recruit is Cao Zhang. Um, you'll notice something about him. His stats, for all intents and purposes, are equal to or better than Machao. And he has 19,000 soldiers. Uh, that soldier count pretty much makes him better than Machao through the end of the game. And if Machao has to be like at level 48 or something, beat that. And plus, he's resoundingly fast. <laughs> he's the perfect leader in the No Tigers party. So, you know, recruit him no matter what. I mean, if you you don't get him until after the Battle of Rune on after you defeat Sima Yi, so, I mean, he comes really, really late in the game. But uh, if you can get a hold of him, recruit him. Like I said, replace Machao with him. Replace anybody you want with him. I mean, he's tiger strength. <laughs> and he's got a good enough intelligence where he'll actually not get killed. <coughs> so there you have it, Arm. That's uh, 50 different generals. Um, my thoughts on them. I'm sorry if I rambled a lot, but I just wanted to go over that with you. And I hope that enlightened you. If I um, if I didn't do such a good job, I apologize. This is my first time trying to do something like this. But yeah, let me know what you think in the comments down below. You know, you know, as usual, give me a like, subscribe, share the video. Leave me some comments. Let me know what you think. If I I rambled too much, if I wasn't informative enough, or maybe you got what you needed, or. You just laugh because my voice sounds completely strange. 
because I'm sitting up here at 12 o'clock in the morning uh, after work and doing a crazy video. Anyway, thank you for taking the time to listen. Um, and thank you for watching the moment videos. And I look forward to giving you all some more videos to watch later on. Uh, have a good night and uh, enjoy the internet.